Hello, everyone. I am Kuri Yu from Hongik University. I would like to talk about uh, social, uh, solving, social problem solving design, and I have been working in the field of utilizing design in de, uh, establishing policies and providing public service. And I would like to talk about the concept and methodology of social problem solving design, and uh, second, on the value of this and uh, lastly I will be talking about the future vision and uh, I will be speaking about relationship and evolution so we see that uh, social problems are becoming more complex and diverse and uh, the role of and possibility of design is expanding as an example the Ministry of Interior has included design into its public administration activities and it, the Seoul metropolitan city has also put in public design in its administrative activities. Design has received a lot of spotlight when establishing policies and many researchers has put research in this area. And Herbert, Herbert Simon said that design helps in achieving goals and it is about a ideal scenario and the ideal situation scenario is related to problem solving. We are living in a super connected society and design creates value and changes. It is no longer just stimulating change. And in order to stimulate change, we are seeing uh, emphasis on social discourse. Participants, they can use their design abilities and we are now focusing on the value of shared design. So I in want to talk about design as a social problem solver. It can uh, set visions, unique visions, and it has factors of creativity and uh, practical design tools can be used. So problems are becoming complex and grand, and design research in these areas have become more important and plays a bigger role. Then, what is design thinking here? Individual skills and capabilities were relied on in the traditional design, but in design thinking, we work in teams, and it is not outcome-centered. It is about the user experience, and the uh, knowledge that you need is multidisciplinary technology, business, and uh, human-centered thoughts are required. As you can see, design thinking uh, puts emphasis on strategy and uh, the time of the team members, and uh, it uh, emphasizes the uh, process of, uh, of uh, strategy, co-design, and process. And, uh, Design thinking has been defined into these four steps. First, there is a wicked problem. And in our world, there are clearly defined problems, but there are also problems that are insufficient, incomplete, and uh, contradictory problems that's very difficult to tackle. In the well-defined problems, scientific management approaches are appropriate, but these ill-defined problems require creative uh, outcomes, thus design thinking is required. Current problems, we see that they are intertwined and uh, there is a lot of interest uh, that uh, cannot be separated with one another. For example, mobility issues and uh, shared uh, mobility, it can help in 
providing additional transportation, but it can also be a disadvantage to taxi drivers, which may lead to social uh, conflict and increased tension. Therefore, when you look at a social uh, issue, you need to have proper problem framing. Framing comes from design thinking, and it provides a new perspective when you look at a problem and define it. Dost said that framing is a perspective of viewing the issue and problem. So the same issue can be defined in different ways depending on what frame you use to look at the problem. Therefore, different solutions can come out. And you need to create a frame in order to consider the various strength constraints. And this can be applied when you view social problems. Next, design thinking is future-oriented and it's based on imagination. As a similar uh, concept, there is speculative design. It uses a design fiction and it, we can think about various scenarios on what if, what will happen in the near future. And uh, this enables various uh, imagination. So the designer does not uh, devise the uh, solution. They just provide a scenario of what may happen. And using design thinking frameworks, you can uh, expedite the future that you want based on collective imagination. In design thinking, a important factor uh, includes these three, visualization, user-centric design thinking and also uh, uh, and first of all in user focus uh, it is about being human-centered design human-centered design uh, is about uh, thinking about uh, the problem-solving process itself. And it should not be uh, focused on business or technology. It should be human-centric. And uh, Brown uh, says that you need to look at the world from uh, various viewpoints of uh, various people, such as the consumers or uh, your colleagues and so forth. And uh, you should uh, think about uh, the users of the policies uh, when you devise policies based on such human-centered design. Next, it is visualization. And generally speaking, it can be about prototyping. Before you come to a solution, you are experiencing and you are testing through prototypes. According to Manzini, prototype in social problem solving, it is about visualizing ideas that you are discussing and in making it more concrete to generate social discussion. This is the Echo City uh, lab project. So you can imagine a change in society, and such imagination will strike a uh, and facilitate discourse. And uh, there was the experience prototyping, which is a method in order to allow people to experience a solution, and by experiencing the uh, prototype solution, people can engage in uh, more discussions. And for co-design, you encourage various people to participate in the design. And in the co-design process, the users are not an observer. They do not act just as an observer. They become a partner as a co-designer, and in the co-design process, various actors need to actively uh, co-work with one another. Collaboration is a must. So a design thinking methodology, if we summarize it, it can be summarized into five characteristics. Up to now, on social problem-solving design, I explained the methodology and the major concepts, and then I would like to talk about the cases that were discussed in Seoul City Social Problem-Solving Design Forum. And 
I also want to talk about the performance. And first, on the themes of the previous year forums in 2017, it was about can we solve social problems through design? That was a question that we asked in 2018. We talked about shared design in order to realize sustainable society in 2019. We talked about the value and assessment. Last year, due to COVID situation, uh, we wanted to discuss the new role of design in the COVID situation. And this year, we will be connecting various uh, aspects of design, and that is why the theme has been decided as reconnect design as a value creator. Looking at the various presentations from 2017 to 2020, there were 25 speakers and they spoke about a social problem solving design within their own context. In the presentation, uh, humanities relate centered design and uh, utilizing a uh, shared platforms. Uh, this was discussed uh, to show the value of social problem solving design. And uh, uh, I also want to talk about two cases uh, that's related to assessment of the value and performance. And uh, I want to show you how the methodologies were actually implemented and uh, the what I want to discuss what the value and role of social problem solving design is. First, on the social innovative design uh, leader is Ezio Manzini, and he visited Korea in 2017. And a city is an environment where many social problems are intertwined. But utilizing collaborative approaches, we can establish a sustainable city. And he introduced Milan's case in which designers work with the urban citizens and uh, designing of a shared design with the citizens and farmers there, uh, visualizing a future leading to effective measures being taken. And uh, Le Professor Leon from Lancaster University talked about uh, the uh, shared design process, uh, utilizing two cases of uh, two cases such as Beyond the Castle. In the case of Beyond the Castle, around uh, the Lancaster Castle, there were green areas, and uh, ways to improve such green areas were co-designed with the citizens living in that area. He compared two. Uh, cases and uh, spoke about how co-design uh, enabled participation of these citizens. However, the tools used were too designer-centered. Whereas the slide that you see here is a leapfrog project. The participants uh, downloaded their toolkits and uh, they could change the scenario themselves. This led to improved capabilities of the participants, and it showed uh, how co uh, how co-design uh, can help in creating new perspectives. Next, Sarah Shulman uh, paid a visit from Canada in 2019, and in, she talked about how probing could be used in order to identify the actual needs of the disabled. By using participatory design, we could see uh, the actual problems faced by those who have disabilities. And we saw that it was related to social events, and this has led to a feeling of isolation for those who have disabilities. And in order to give opportunities for them to participate and to be encouraged, uh, she introduced kudos as a way to overcome that situation. And this was last year's international conference. Uh, we experienced enormous change due to COVID. And Karen Brendberg talked about it in 
how we can overcome COVID-19. And 350 designers from different 17 time zones worked on a IBM COVID-19 design challenge. And this case shows that a company's design thinking project could lead to a collaboration, and it showed how time and space can be expanded. On the theme of uh, assessing a social uh, impact and influence, we heard from New York City and the participatory design uh, can be assessed and uh, it was suggested that there can be indexes to make assessments here. In 2019, I also provided a presentation about the quality of public service uh, felt by the recipients of such public services. And I introduced the Seoul Metropolitan Government's case during the presentation. So, through such cases, we see that social problem-solving design is about the evolution of the user's relationships and the framework. Previous designers uh, asked questions about what they should make, and they receive requests from the users. But now they have to define the problems themselves with the users, and it is important to have co-design process here. In 2030, we hope that uh, we can have more network in order uh, to expand relationships and the scopes. And the design outcomes, we know that in the future will not just be about products, it will be about establishing various relationships between uh, people and uh, products and services. And design a methodology will move from design for consumers to design with users, and in the future, it will be a creative community uh, which is designed by people. And in the process of social problem solving and innovation, what is the role of a designer and public planner? They need to identify um, undiscovered needs and desires. They need to make connections and to create a community, a new type of community. Those who we call designers, they create tools and they need to uh, enable the participants to express what they want and imagination for the future. So designers are those who provide the tools and material to do so. And the capabilities of the participants have to be assessed and planned. Once a product comes out, in the past, we thought that the design process has come to an end. But now, in the social realm, projects continuously evolve, and we need to continuously upgrade the way we work. Therefore, various actors need to establish various new roles, and we need service designers that can create additional value and new value. So, in summary, social problem-solving design needs to talk about ideal scenarios, and all parties must participate in the process, and it should design a better service and a better system, and it is a process of solving problems and producing meaning. So designers need to be tool makers that can enable collective creativity for a sustainable future and is a value creator that it creates a meaning and it creates solutions. With this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you for listening.